Hi, what's up Frugal Resin Artists? This is Rebecca, the Frugal Resinista, and I am coming to you today with a project to make a resin geode side table. I am using one of these wooden end tables that basically comes with this disc and three legs that screw in. And when you purchase these, they come with a glass top so that basically what you do is just put some kind of fabric over these and the glass on top and you have an end table. So here is an awesome tip for you guys. I get these at resale shops and usually it's because the glass is missing. Sometimes though the glass isn't. I do have some with the glass not missing, but these are not expensive to begin with. I will link these to you guys below if you want to purchase one new because they're not expensive if you're going to try this project. But I go to resale shops and I refuse to pay more than $2 for these. So there's a resale shop that gets these every once in a while here where I'm at. And every time they have one sitting there for $2, I pick one up. So I currently have this one and three others all sitting ready to um, be painted and everything. And let me show you a top that I just recently finished. So this is the back of it. I haven't finished the bottom yet, but this is what I made out of it. Now this one has bumpy glass on it. So this is smooth, 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 bumpy, bumpy. So if somebody wanted to put like an end table lamp or something like that, I make sure I leave enough smooth space for that to happen. So that's one I, I made quite a while ago that um, has been sitting here a while and I'm getting ready to do an art show so I'm going to take it to that. But for today, what I'd like to do is actually cut this one with my saw. Um, I'm going to be using a jigsaw and I want to cut just a small hole so that we have that spot to stick all of our crystals in. I have this flipped upside down because if I flip it over to the top to make my design, I don't know exactly where these metal pieces are. So what I'm going to do is real quickly cut all of these apart and just kind of lay my stones out. Now the reason I'm doing this is that it's easy to draw a shape and think, oh, that's a good shape for a hole. But what happens is that if you draw the shape for a hole, not taking into account how much farther in the hole all of these little stones are going to stick, sometimes you don't make your hole big enough and the whole thing doesn't look quite right. So I'm also going to off-center this, and I'll show you what I mean by that. But basically, I don't want to make a hole right in the middle of this. And the reason behind that is that if this is going to be used as an end table where people actually set things, like a lamp or even just you know a stack of magazines or something, I don't want to have a giant hole in the middle so that a lot of the table is not usable. So instead of making a big hole for all these crystals, I'm going to make just a smaller one and then have most of the decoration be what's going around. Now the other thing I'm going to do, and this is different than the other one I just showed you, I am not going to have anything sticking up on the rest of the surface of this. So I'm going to be relying on using glitter instead of actual stones because I want a completely flat surface so that this can be a functioning table, not just a pretty table that you can't actually do anything with. So I'll speed some of this up, but what I'm going to do basically is just lay some of these out. And I don't have an order or anything right now yet, but I'm going to lay some of these out so that I can get a general idea of, first of all, where I want the hole to be, but also how big I need to draw it before I cut it so that I've got a hole big enough to support all of these. Okay, so this is the basic idea. I don't need it to be perfect. I started with a smaller hole, but I don't want to just make a circle in this because I feel like um, the table's already a circle, so instead of making the whole thing look very circular, I'm going to kind of angle this. So the next thing I'm going to do is grab my Sharpie real quick and just trace along the outside edge of what I just made, and then we'll go cut it out. Let's move to the jigsaw, and I will show you how I use it to cut this out. Alright you guys, I'm out in my garage now. I'm going to be using my mural and my jigsaw. Okay. So I will tell you guys just a couple things about each of these. What I've done is I've just taken, <laughs> my puppy wants to hang out today. Um, I've just taken the largest drill bit that I have in my set and I'm going to drill a starter hole. Now obviously if you have sawhorses and things, use those. I put this on a cardboard box honestly because my sawhorses are behind all of our bicycles right now in the garage. I just don't feel like digging them up, but it doesn't matter for this project because this is sturdy enough. So I'm going to drill a starter hole.
And then that hole is big enough for me to fit my saw blade right down into it. And all I'm going to do from there is squeeze the trigger and go around the marks I made. Now it's not going to be quite as jagged because it doesn't turn that easily, but it's going to give me the same hole shape that I'm looking for. With the jigsaw, please don't be afraid to use power tools. If you have these sitting in your garage, I really, really, really think you should try them. They're a lot of fun once you try. I was super nervous at first, but it's a lot of fun and it's not hard. Let's head back inside. Now that my hole is cut, I'm gonna do two things. I'm first gonna prop this up though. These little wire racks have been really helpful for all kinds of things that I pour in this pour box because it gives me a great thing to set things on and I got them for a dollar at the dollar store. So the first thing I'm gonna do real quick is just take some sandpaper and file this hole that I made. The next thing I'm gonna do is use this Valspar Stain Blocking Bonding Primer and Sealer. This is a primer sealer in one. I will link you to this down below. I believe they've changed the label the way it looks because this lasts forever for me um, since I only have to use it once in a while. But this stuff is great because for wood like this that's particle board and it's got a lot of little dips and holes and things in it, this fills it in really well. It also dries super fast and so that's just kind of nice if I'm in the middle of the project and I don't want to wait forever for things to dry. All right, I'm gonna get that cleaned up and we'll let it dry a few minutes. A couple of notes on this. The other reason that I am not painting the underneath right now is that for the outside edge of this, I'm going to tape off so that I don't lose a bunch of resin over the edges. And then my edge is going to be painted with um, enamel paint. And if you guys have watched my other videos, you know how much I love enamel paint. It's used for models like, you know, airplane, model airplanes, model ships, things like that. But um, their metallic colors are really cool and they float to the surface and they give your geo to 3D effect, even if you're only adding one layer, um, which saves you money in terms of not having to do multiple layers to get multiple 3D levels. So the edges will be done with that enamel paint, and if any of that accidentally goes onto the bottom, I want to do my paint primer sealer last on the bottom to just smooth off so it's just a blank white. So I will be doing that, but I won't do it until the end. Now these edges I did not cover with the primer, and this is particle board and it's pretty rough looking, but if you've seen some of my other videos, I like leaving the edges rough like that because when you paint the gold colored enamel paint on that rough edge, it looks like an actual gold nugget. It, it almost looks like the same texture as if you were getting a gold nugget stone out of the ground. So I like to leave it like that. Enamel paint is pretty waterproof once it's dry, so I don't worry about that not being sealed. The enamel paint will seal it, but you're also, you know, if you needed to, able to just paint a layer of resin or something on afterward if you're not sure about that finish. So I'm gonna let this dry for a few minutes and then we're gonna start adding all of our crystals. All right, this isn't totally dry everywhere, but it's dry on the inside here. So I'm gonna be using a glue gun to start attaching my crystals and I just decided to change the colors I was using, just the blue. I'm going to still use gold and white and I'm going to change this to more of a beach kind of feel in terms of the colors. So even though I need this to be pretty flat, I'm going to mix in some sand that is like a regular tan color and some white sand with some sparkles and things. So I still have interesting different designs in here other than just paint, but it'll still be really flat. So. I'm going to get going. I'm only going to give you one quick note here on these. As I glue these in, I'm going to be very careful that I do not make them stick up any farther than the flat part of this hole because I want to make sure, again, that this table is as flat as possible. Now, when you start pouring things, you have to absolutely make sure that you pour some clear resin around this area too to stick these on permanently because the hot glue is not going to hold them forever. So let's speed it up.
right, you guys, let's go through the colors I'm using. I'm using Craft Essentials acrylic paint. I don't even know where I got this. It's Seamist, maybe Michaels? I don't know. I make sure I never pay more than a dollar for acrylic paint, so I always get it once on sale. Um, folk Art in their Winter White, and I have mixed that with Silver Pearl X pigment powder. If you haven't watched this before, it's actually called Macro Pearl. This stuff is amazing. It adds all the shine and brilliance and depth to what you're doing. This is what I was telling you guys about that enamel paint. This is in metallic gold and, oops, I set it over here. Comes in this little thing here, but you don't need much of this. And this is the stuff that floats. So I'm gonna pour that on after I pour my other colors on and it's gonna just break up the colors and look really cool. This is what I'm painting the edges with when I'm finished. Um, and then I have, this paint is Craft Smart in Khaki. And in this, I have mixed, this is how cheap I am, you guys. I like to say frugal, but sometimes it's just plain cheap. When we moved to our house, there was a whole thing of playground sand in our garage, just a bag of it that was left from their sandbox. And so I literally kept it. Um, and so half of this was free play playground sand. And then I got some white inexpensive decorative sand from Michael's when it was on sale. So I mixed half of each of those. And then I added a little bit of this diamond dust. I've used this a few times in some other videos. This is basically like really, really thin glass to the point where it sparkles like you would use glitter, but it's glass. So you definitely want to glove up for this because you don't want to touch that. But I've mixed those all together already because I wanted to have that ready to mix in with my resin for the spots I'm pouring that since it's going to pour thicker. So what I'm going to do, you guys, is remember one of each of these pumps is what you need to make equal amounts of things. I'm going to speed this up and I hope you enjoy watching. This is the fun, relaxing part and we will get going. to do this but I've got sitting here with me some stone coat countertops art coat and quick coat so I'm going to use the quick coat and then if I decide that I'm going to want to um, put a clear coat over the top of this I would use the art coat for that bubbles but it really moves your resin around and sometimes you don't want to deal with that but right now I actually do want to move my resin around because I feel like it's not um, moving quite as much as I like and I want to make sure I get the colors really mixing because I will draw finer lines in a little while hours and this is completely dry. I actually checked it at the hour and a half mark and it was all set but I had other things going on so I had to come back to this. Now I didn't mention this to you guys but a lot of these wooden 
and tables, the edges are straight. This one is not that way. It's got a slightly beveled edge. And so I knew that the resin was gonna kind of leak down a little bit, which is fine, but it does make it a little stickier with trying to pull the tape off. See how that little top bit is kind of staying on in some places? A lot of people ask this question about how on earth are you supposed to get your tape off afterward? All you have to do is heat it up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off what I can without the heat and then you just lightly use the blowtorch. You don't want to get it too hot because it'll make the tape real tacky and messy, but if you do it just a little bit, you will be able to easily peel off the extra tape as well as the drips that are on it. So actually I didn't even need to heat this up if you if you can see I'm not sure how great my camera angle is but um, I was able to get this tape off just by using my nails I just cut my nails short so I could play guitar better so it's a little trickier than usual but um, looks like we're in good shape now it did leave a little bit of a sharp edge here I am going to go ahead and do a clear coat on the top of this I was thinking about it as this was drying that's just because if this is going to be a table and people want to set anything on it, you know, if something spills or whatever. It needs to be obviously protected because I'm about to draw lines with acrylic pens and sign it and everything. But before I do that, just really briefly, I am going to sand these edges just the tiniest bit so that that sharp edge is gone. So that when I do my clear coat over the top, it is going to run over. I'll paint those edges. but. I would like that clear coat to cover the edges if it's going to cover everything else anyway. So I'm going to sand just very lightly and go from there. Now one note about this, there's a lot of debate. I know people don't love to use the respirator, the masks, all that stuff. And I probably don't do it as often as I should. But you really, really need to use one if you're sanding this. You do not want to breathe in resin dust. So I um, was going to do this for you guys, but I might do it off camera and then just show you later the finished product. All right, I am shaking up my acrylic paint pens to draw a few detailed lines on this. I like the brand Posca, and I use the extra fine tip for these. Now, unfortunately, I've looked around for lots of videos myself to give tips on this part, and I have never found any specific tips on here's exactly how you draw these lines so I wish I could give you guys some really detailed info but I don't have it so I'll just tell you kind of what I've learned myself as I've done this um, first of all I try to just not stop as much as possible if you can start your line and go for as long as possible without having to try to drop and reconnect your lines it works a lot easier I like to do more than one line right next to each other because I just think it's pretty and I think it adds um, a nice little look to things and so I'm going to just get started again I'll speed it up and once I get past this point I will give you guys a close-up of everything actually this and then painting my edge and then I'll give you guys a close-up and um, I'm not going to show you how I paint the legs and everything because this is already a long video but I will show them to you finished and explain what I did. So let's draw some lines and then I'll paint the edges and we're pretty much done other than the top clear coat. I'm not going to video that either because um, one of my past videos has a tutorial on that already and that uh, I don't remember the video number but I'm going to post it right here. So you can check that video out if you would like to see when I talk through how to pour a clear top coat and let's get started.
I'm showing you guys a very close up of the edge here. Doesn't that look like gold stone? I think it does. I think it's really cool once you paint it with that enamel paint. Let me go ahead and just give you kind of a close up of the different parts of this piece now. Really happy with how it turned out. The lines are always trickier than I think they're going to be, and they were, as usual. Um, but overall, I think this looks really cool. I'll get some photos of it put together and finished, but um, here's the here's the finished product. Pretty happy with it. I'm going to real quick show you the legs. What I did, again, because this video is long, I didn't have time to keep doing it, um, painting that part too, but those are the table legs. I primed them with the same primer paint. And then that enamel paint, I just use painter's tape at three different heights on each of those legs and then use that enamel paint down there too. And it just, I think, makes it look really cool when it's put together. So I'm going to put it together, take a few shots and show you guys. But thank you as always so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you to all my new subscribers. I appreciate your patience as I figure out Facebook and Instagram and all of that with how many subscribers there are now with my kiddos and everything. It's been a little tricky to try to keep up with all of it, but I'm doing my best. So, um, I really just appreciate how much you guys watch and everything. And I thank you very much and I will see you very soon. Have a good day.